Hello, my name is Colin Driscoll. I'm an ear, nose, and throat doctor at the Mayo Clinic, the Children's Center, Rochester, Minnesota. I have a subspecialty interest in ears and ear-related problems. My plan today is to talk about three different issues uh, regarding cochlear implants in children. Over the years, the age of implantation has gradually dropped. Uh, so we used to implant older and older children, and, and now that age has continued to drift down. And it's unclear exactly how young is young enough, but our goal now is to implant children as soon as we know there's a significant hearing loss and that the cochlear implant is going to be the uh, uh, choice to restore hearing and to, and to help develop speech and language. One way to look at this is historically we've uh, prescribed hearing aids for hearing loss for many years. We would never wait until a child was a year or two years old before we would consider a hearing aid. As soon as we know they're uh, a candidate for a hearing aid, we would fit hearing aids. So why would we wait until a child was one or 18 months or two years old before proceeding with a cochlear implant? It really doesn't make sense from a language uh, development standpoint. So we know from our data and others that the younger we implant children, the more likely we are to have a very successful outcome. The second issue I wanted to talk about was the uh, discussion of implanting one ear or both ears, and whether we should do that at the same time or first one ear and then the second ear later. Uh, in our program, we've been uh, pretty strong proponents of implanting both ears when we know that both ears meet candidacy, and the idea being that the more sound uh, we can provide, the better the language, develops going, language development will be. There's increasing evidence to say that a long delay between implanting one ear and the next ear leads to suboptimal outcomes for the second ear. And this makes sense uh, logically if the ear is not utilized for many years. It's hard to wake it up again. Basically your brain has built a super highway to that first ear. It's paying attention to that one and it doesn't know what to do with the second ear. And language development happens at a very young age and there's a window of opportunity for children to learn language well. If we don't provide access to sound early on, then you can only make up so much later. So ideally, uh, we would implant both ears uh, early on and give access to uh, sound in both ears. We know the impact of hearing in one ear. So there's many children are born with hearing loss in one ear that isn't restored and they rely on their uh, normal hearing ear. And although you can do okay, there's still a day-to-day -day problem with that, particularly hearing and noise. And we know that even hearing loss in one ear will increase the risk of having difficulty in school. The third issue I wanted to talk about is the importance of having a solid team. As a surgeon, I can put the device in. And there are technically uh, important aspects to that it, that are required to get a good outcome, but in some ways it, it's a minor step in the process. The rest of the team is extraordinarily important in achieving uh, the best possible outcomes. The more experience your implant team has evaluating and managing uh, other children with cochlear implants, the more experience they could draw on to, again, arrive at the best possible outcome for your child. So the implant team, the audiologists, um, are all uh, a critical component of providing maximal f uh, function from the device. The uh, educational setting, the teachers who uh, help support your child in school are critical to, again, achieving a good outcome. So we could put the device in, we can program it, but it needs to be managed uh, day in, day out, and a child needs appropriate school support, again, to perform at their highest possible level. Lastly, the family is critically important. Um, the more language we're exposed to, the easier it is to learn it. And so this team, including uh, me as a surgeon, our audiologists, our educational audiologists, uh, speech language pathologists, uh, the uh, teachers, deaf, uh, deaf and um, 
part of hearing educators in your environment in the classroom and the family are all critical to uh, having a child uh, progress in their language acquisition and uh, reach their goals.